Hello, fellow Novians, and welcome to another episode in this review series. My name is Rob, and today we're taking a look at the all-new Athos from Chimera Shipworks. So, as with my last video, this is a ship that I worked on, so I am very familiar with it. Um, so let's go through and take a look at all of the features that it has. If we walk down here underneath, you can see space brakes and tons of vertical thrusters and more space brakes. So this thing can lift a full cargo off of the ground and get it airborne. And with the amount of engines that we have, um, which I tried to break up and not do like a complete engine wall. Uh, this thing can get off the ground and get to AGG height pretty quickly. So with no AGG assistance, this thing can lift six kilotons. And with AGG assistance, it can lift a full load, whatever that may be. I think it's roughly nine kilotons or 9.5 kilotons. It's approaching 10. Um, so this thing does have 10 large cargo containers that are all boosted for extra capacity and lower weight. We've got two extra large military space engines and three large uh, military space engines. And all of these uh, engines back here are also uncommon military atmospheric, uh, ab ab uh, atmospheric engines. However, this can be purchased with advanced engines if you want to spend a little bit more buckage. Buckage? Is that a word? Well, it is now. Anyway, let's take a look. Um, personally, I like her styling. Um, it looks more like a kind of uh, cargo ship with some flair instead of just being like a general box and it also gives some room to put these anti-grav repulsors in so they don't just look out of place in my opinion um, so yeah that's what we got here we've got a uh, force field uh, entrance um, and if you come inside and we hit the button you can see it's also got a force field uh, front uh, sealant door or whatever you want to call this thing right you can walk up here and uh, not fall out of the ship um, and this button is also linked to the seat so when you sit down in the main seat this also closes uh, so to keep you in case you forget to lock the door uh, you can do that when you come in um, so one of the features of this ship when we come in we've got a uh, let's see, I'm gonna I'm going to turn off my overlay just so I can stop getting that stupid pop-up every time I look at the ship. Uh, so we use the repulsors here um, to kind of do like an, an elevator look like, oh, I'm, a, I'm getting on the on the uh, teleporter whoop, and teleport upstairs. <laughs> um, so there's a little bit of uh, overlapping here um, that is done with... Uh, another person helping you in build mode. Now that stuff may get patched out, but for now it works. And, and if it does get patched out, then it just, it makes the uh, elevator hover a little bit higher than the other things. Um, inside in the front here, we've got the uh, inventory display. Um, if you go ahead and turn that on, it'll tell you exactly what's in all of your cargo containers and the percentage. Um, and then down here, it also tells you the percentage uh, till full. So if we dumped like six kilotons of hematite in there, it might say like 60% full, All right? And over here, uh, we have the uh, the ore uh, loadout. So the way this works is you just activate the board um, and then you use your mouse wheel to change what to whatever planet you're on. So if we go over to like Sinan, uh, it tells you the depth for every, uh, uh, every ore on that planet. So if you're looking for quartz on Sinan, you know it's between 0 and 823 meters. So that's just a helpful thing I like to throw on most of the uh, ships. No, nope, interactable marks is off. Oh. All right, so continuing on, um, we have our cargo bay downstairs. You can walk all the way around it. Uh, so you can see all of the cargo containers 
At the back, you have easy access to all of your engines, so if you manage to damage any of them, you can do all your repairs from inside. The only repairs you can't do uh, here on your engines are the three uh, large military engines that are kind of like right here. So if you cut through the floor, you'd still be able to uh, do some access from inside. Um, on the on this, uh, what would this be? This would be the uh, starboard side. Uh, we have four um, uh, military fuel tanks. Um, and everything is labeled as to what it goes to. So we have the main engine space tank and then three space tanks for vertical thrust. Um, and that lets it show up on the readout in the cockpit. Uh, if we come up here, this is just kind of a little walkway, right? This, that's all this is, just a little walkway. Uh, so down here we have our space radar and we have three atmospheric fuel tanks. Um, so we have the starboard atmo tank the center atmo tank and the port atmo tank so you know exactly which engines are pulling from which um, obviously your center atmo tank is going to drain slower because it's only running four engines as opposed to your port and starboard which are running six engines a piece um, and we have two medium cargo containers back here uh, that if we bring up the linking tool uh, i'd have to go into build mode yeah if we bring up our linking tool, you can see that that is going to the uh, warp drive. So we've got two uh, fuel tanks feeding the warp drive. I'm not fuel tanks. We've got two medium storage containers for all of your warp cell needs. And let me get back out of build mode here. Uh, again, this is an AGG hauler. So if we go to the second level here, take a little walkie through. Uh, if we head towards the back of the ship, um, these two Lua panels back here control the um, lighting uh, so if your if your lighting ever gets kind of wonky or whatever all you can do is turn those off and on and there's a button in the cockpit that I'll show you in a little bit um, but basically these boards are just set up with a very basic Lua script that just says turn these lights on and set them blue um, so if you wanted your accents to be a different color uh, like say you wanted it red, we could set that up for you, no problem. And then all of the lights on the ship would just turn to red every time you turn them on. Um, and that helps as far as like spawning new ships. Um, you know, when you spawn a ship, it doesn't save your lighting states. So I would have to go back through and manually set all of these lights, all these accent lights to blue and on. And uh, it's just easier to do it with a Lua code, right? Um, we have the uh, small anti-gravity generator and back here we have a little lounge um, with a voxel table and a couple chairs um, and a screen I'll turn those on yeah there we go um, and then your warp drive and we also have the warp drive container relay here for putting your warp cells in so you would just dump your warp cells in the container here um, we also have a surrogate VR station and um, the surrogate pad and one of your resurrection nodes. I have two on this ship, one at the back and one at the front. Although anytime I crash, it seems to just destroy both of them no matter where your damage is situated. So uh, I don't know if the game does that on purpose or what, but yeah. I've, I've destroyed like the front of the ship and then this is the only thing on the back of the ship that's destroyed is this is the uh, stupid respawn pod um, so that's the little lounge back here just little features some wood floor you know you can come back here and hang out while you're uh, while you're traversing space or if you're joining somebody else um, we have our main container relay here sunk into the floor why is it sunk into the floor because this is the best center of gravity spot that I could find that will allow you to turn without uh, without also rolling. Um, because, again, if you don't know, your container relay basically becomes every container on the ship. And so all of the weight centers on that container relay. So if you're full up uh, 8 kilotons of mass in your cargo containers, that's where the weight ends up. Um, so as we come forward, we have our lower bridge and upper bridge and... Uh, this is where the elevator brings you up. Um, we do have DU orbital. Orbital? No. DU damage uh, on these screens here. And this screen right here, I mean this seat right here, is also linked to the space radar. 
So if you wanted to fly and have your space radar available, you would use this seat to fly. Um, and then over here is just a regular seat. Um, and we have a warp cell calculator. And up here is the other resurrection node. Um, and then we've got a nice, uh, nice view out of the top here. Um, the elevator also goes up to the top. So if we pop up to the top of the ship, uh, you can see we got some nice flat surfaces up here that you could dock another ship on. And you can walk around up here and go to the front of the ship if you want. Look down in there, right? And you can see we've got more space brakes up here. Uh, we've got two large stabilizers for turning and then a ton of wings uh, for entering atmosphere and just being able to fly with a ton of weight. And that's what's up here. You also have the, uh, the, the medium atmospheric radar, which is linked to the front seat in the cockpit. All right, let's drop down here. Um, so this is the front piloting station. We have our um, emergency controller. We have the lights button. This will toggle your, uh, your lighting state. So all those blue lights back there that I talked about, this is also linked to the chair. So if you sit in the chair, this button turns on and it just makes sure that those lights are always on. We've got the two data banks for both uh, Arch HUD, which is what's installed in the seat, and do you damage report. All right, and I've got my fuel levels over here. Uh, the space tank one does not seem to be set correctly because it's displaying 112, but yeah, I'll fix that. Or somebody needs to apply some boosts, I think. Um, yeah, I think this was spot hasn't hasn't gotten most of the boosts applied to it yet. All right, uh, so the do you uh, the the one for this screen damage report uh, the the thing is right here. So if you sit down in the seat um, and you notice your fuel's not updating or whatever, you you can just really look at it and hit enter. You can also turn over here and you can see that that button is lit up now right because we sat down in the seat um, you can also turn on your uh, emergency controller here as well and uh, see your damage over here and your fuel over here and still have a very nice view of what's in front of you so let's go into third person so we can take a look around the ship right so most of the space brakes are on the top with half of them on top and half of them on bottom kind of um, yeah. So I have found that I can get into space no problem with six kilotons, and I am not that skilled of a pilot. I'm still working on my warm-up skills and everything else. Um, I think I just got my adjusters to, like, level three. So she handles great. She carries a ton of cargo, and uh, you see how quickly it gets off the ground with no cargo in it. With, with full-up cargo, it'll still lift you to, uh, to your full height and then just hover there. Uh, you see it actually pushed me past the vertical hover limit because it, it, there's just so many vertical thrusters down there. Um, yeah, so let's get her in the air, see what she can do, right? We do have the uh, anti-grav generator, right? And you can see she lifts off just fine. 300 knots or kilometers per hour, just up in the air, no problem. Um, and this is running Arch HUD. We can turn off the help so we don't have that on the screen. And uh, I can do a video on that. It's pretty much the same as do orbital. It's just it got some added features and, and uh, other things. Um, if we hit, oof, already hit and burn speed, right? <laughs> um, if we hit Alt uh, G, it turns on the AGG. Um, so you can see mine is set to 2,006 kilometers. If we get up here to around 2,000 kilometers, we can just cut our engines and hover. So let me stop my engines. And I can just engage my brakes here. Let's go to a full stop, full stop. And you can 
can see it's going to keep me up here. It's going to bounce a little bit. Yep. So the best way to use an AGG is to set your autopilot or whatever and then set your, um, your height on that autopilot so that it levels you out just very nicely and then kill all your engines. That way you don't just bounce up and down continuously. Um, if you don't know how an AGG works, it only works above 1,000 uh, kilometers from the surface. So you don't want to set your AGG at 1,000 because if you bounce below 1,000, you suddenly just fall because it can't sustain. So once you're above 1,000, you can hold Alt and the space bar to go up or change your singularity altitude. Um, and you can go all the way into space. It's very slow. Um, so I would only use an assisted AGG if you're over your cargo weight and you just need to get into uh, space. So that would be like 6,000 kilometers. Because um, what, what inevitably happens with this ship is that as you near the uh, space ceiling, um, which is about 4,600 on Alioth, um, and this is almost all AGG ships. Um, once you near that space ceiling, if you're full of cargo, like you're you're full up nine kilo, nine uh, kilotons of weight, and you're you see your space engines kick in, and you just can't get that warm up fast enough um, for it to actually start generating uh, enough thrust to pull you out of the atmosphere, and you just keep falling back into Elioth's atmosphere. Um, and that's where the AGG would come in handy. You would want to pre-charge your AGG to about like maybe. Uh, 5,000 kilometers or 4,000 kilometers um, and then as soon as you hit 4,000 kilometers just ramp it up to about 6,000 kilometers and then engage your space engines and then you're you know you, you have that uh, luxury time of being able to turn on your boosters and get not your boosters but your uh, your space engines and get them all warmed up and generating thrust and get out of the atmosphere um, Anyway, let's turn the AGG back off so I don't have to worry about that. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, trajectory and see how well this turns. Um, if we do just a regular little turn here, which I wouldn't suggest with full cargo, you can see it kind of lags behind, right? And this is anything with, with, uh, with this much weight on it. Uh, it's going to take a while if you try to yaw. But if you do a roll turn, you know, you can see that that line keeps up very nicely. So if we wanted to align back to base, you know, just do a nice and slow bank turn. And this is good to go. You can see my I'm, I already hit the uh, space height and my space engines are ramping up. But yeah, she gets the job done and she's got some styling to boost. So if you want to check it out in person, come on by the uh, Chimera Shipworks showroom. I turned a little bit too much there and ended up in space. <laughs> Um, but come on by the uh, Chimera Shipworks showroom and take a look at her yourself. Buy a blueprint if you want, or uh, we can spawn the token. And as I said, like colors are an option. Um, it does cost a bit more. Let me slam on the brakes here. <laughs> so you can see it slows right down. With a full load, you need to be a little bit more cautious coming into Alioth if you have low skills, but otherwise, she is a good ship and will get you down, right? And it, it, the good thing about the AGG is if you were a little nervous, um, you would also have to wait for it to charge up, right? But you could set your AGG to like mm, 10,000 kilometers and then kind of cut your thrust a bit and uh, let the ship 
pull you, uh, l let it hit that AGG height and then slowly descend back into orbit. You know, it's kind of a safety net. Now, if you hit it fast enough, it's going to go right through that AGG height and slam into the ground. Woo, we got tons of thrust. Because <laughs> we are not full and those extra large space engines are kicking like chicken. I don't know what that means. All right, and we're back on the ground over here at Camera HQ, and I just wanted to share a uh, a little story here about this ship. So, when we build ships, we always test them to their limits, right? So originally, the back end of this ship was only half as wide. Uh, so there was only um, six engines back there. Um, mostly because we didn't really understand like how fast the AGG worked or all that other stuff. Um, since done a little bit more learnings on that side of things, right? Um, but got her into space. Everything looked good. Full load. Good to go. Turn them back around. Um, realized we didn't have enough space brakes. Hit the atmosphere too hard. Slammed into the North Pole. Uh, found Elioth's butthole and uh, got stuck in a crater uh, and then <laughs> had to have people come out and uh, take the weight off the ship and in order to rescue ourselves, right? Um, and so that was kind of a failure, but the failure led to a better design. Uh, so the back end of the ship ended up wider, which allowed me not only to add more engines, but also allowed me to add more space engines and a ton more wings because um, this space was not back here for the wings so the original back of the ship ended about right here because uh, i was trying to keep it slim but then i said if this is going to be a heavy cargo hauler it needs a lot more engines so there are ships out there that have a ton more engines and can lift you know a full load of like 12 kilotons off alioth with no agg uh, but this ship is specifically designed to lift around six or seven kilotons unassisted and the rest with the AGG. So that is uh, the kind of the niche that this f fits in. It's also a lot less expensive than some of those other ships um, because we save on having to uh, buy more components and charge you for them. Uh, so the blueprint on this is about 10 million. The price uh, for a fully spawned ship uh, is 40 million. So, you know, good deal. Uh, we manufacture most of the components here so we can keep the cost down and pass on those savings to other players. So if you're interested in the ship, again, as I said, come on by Chimera Shipwork Showroom. The ship is on display. If you just want to buy a blueprint and build it yourself, you can do that. Uh, or we're more than happy to spawn one for you with all of the subsequent boosts that come with it. Um, so yeah, boosted fuel tanks, boosted cargo containers, boosted engines, boosted uh, boosted space brakes, boosted adjusters, boosted wings. I could just say boosted everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's basically boosted everything. <laughs> I think the only thing that's not boosted is the AGG, and there are no boosts for that. So yeah. It's a nice ship. I am happy with how it turned out. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and make sure you slap that thumbs up button. Um, if you didn't like it, I am sorry. Let me know how I can do better in the future. Uh, if you have a ship of your own that you'd like me to feature, I would be more than happy to take it for a test drive and go through all of the features uh, with everyone um, and talk it up, you know, uh, I, I'm doing this kind of separate from just Chimera, so I don't want to just feature all of my own ships and, and uh, have it be like a big commercial every time. <laughs> so if you have a ship that you want to share with other people and you're trying to sell it and you just like people to see it and try it out and come on by your place, I'll make sure that's, all that stuff's linked in the description. Um, just let me know. Hit me up on uh, on. Uh, I wanted, I was going to say hit me up on Facebook, but don't do that because I don't use Facebook. Uh, but yeah, hit me up on the discords or just leave a comment in the comment section and we can chat. 
All right. Don't forget, as always, to subscribe if you'd like to see future videos on this stuff or my other stuff on the tutorials and uh, hit that notification button to be notified every time I drop a video. Until next time, I will see you out there in space. Stay safe, my friends.